Sorry, assholes, your quiet day at the office is about to get severely fucked up. Guys, welcome back to the After Action Review. You know me, I'm Nick Guy, the world's most okay at Scream Beret. And as per usual, we have more than okay guests. He's back. We love him. Clay Martin, former scout sniper, former recon marine, raised his JT score, became a real hitter. Third group guy, but we won't hold it against him. And we got to do the heavy lifting. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, somebody's got to cover down the entire world, I guess. It seems to be what we do best these days. Yeah. But, uh, and e prolific, pro and I'm going to say, I'm going to say you're a prolific writer. I am. You're all, you're at your, your, your reviews are all over the place. Your books, they're on my nightstand. I love them. But you just finished writing a brand new book. Isn't that correct? I did, I did, and uh, fortuitous timing. And as long as we're okay with the fact that prolific means a lot, not good. I, thumbs up? Low column A, low column B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, whatever, we'll take it either way. I mean, obviously, you, I mean, obviously you're like omniscient to, to write this book, like right now, though. I mean, I mean well, first off, what's the book called? It, it's called uh, Concrete Jungle, A Green Berets Urban Survival Guide. And uh, it's actually funny that it, that it came about the way that it came about because uh, I didn't actually just write it this week. I actually started it a year ago uh, when I was living over in Oregon, which I'm sure you're familiar with how Oregon has always been. That's like enemy territory. I lived over for about six months last year. So uh, you know, I moved to Oregon and I started taking a look around and I'm like, oh, and it, you know how it is, man. It's kind of like, uh, like being a team guy that's in you know, Syria 20 years ago before all this other stuff kicked off or, or if you've been to, or if you've been in, you know, maybe Pakistan near the border of Afghanistan back in the eighties and you're looking at this like, Ooh, 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 this is not going to be okay. So basically because of where I was living at, I kind of saw the handwriting on the wall saw it like, this is not going to be okay. Things are going to come apart. And you can also, you know, counter that with the fact that we've been so soft on these Antifa nerds for the last, you know, three, four years, at least maybe even a little bit longer than that. So anyway, I started writing this book about how to survive if your city starts falling apart, uh, you know, based on my experience fighting in all kinds of urban zones overseas. So I'm writing this thing, and I get about eh, halfway done, and, uh, you know, I take it to some publishers, and nobody wants to touch it. They're like, ooh, like, that's, uh, that's a bad word. Like, that's not good for, like, economy. Like, nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants, you know, sunshine and rainbows. So last week, uh, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, Oh my God, I wish I still had that. And I remember that before my house burned down, I emailed a copy of it to a friend to kind of proofread. And he went back to his email and he still had it. So he fired it back off of me. I finished it up and we, uh, we published it, uh, I guess, yesterday. Man, and it, seriously, at better timing, you could not have no, no, chosen. No, uh, but uh, real quick, I just want to preface this because – you know, everybody thinks, you know, Green Berets, GWAT era, you know, obviously experts in, in urban combat, things like that. But I, I kind of want to circle back to what you just said. Okay. You, you, were, you, were, living, you were living in, in uh, Oregon. Yep. And you were seeing the writing on the wall, similar to, like, if you were an SF dude that was doing, like, a, a J set to, you know, with, you know, Syria or, or Pakistan, yeah. or you were assigned to the embassy or something like that. Right. So, but I, I, I wanted to bring this up because, like, as an SF dude, you're kind of uniquely qualified to read the writing on the wall. It's not just combat, but what a lot of, what a mission that SF has that a lot of people don't understand or don't even know that we have is something called operational pre preparation of the environment, which, which is, you know, 
it, I guess in in layman's terms for something that is a little more concrete um, for the layman to understand, it's, it's laying the groundwork for follow-on operations. But whenever whenever SF guys travel, you always write up a report and it just sits. So if at any time conflict does arise and things go hot, now we have an encyclopedia of all these dudes over the years that have spent time there, people that met and, and places right. and things like that. So I, I wanted to just frame that real quick because we were talking, kind of seeing the writing on the wall here. And, you know, six months ago, yeah, Antifa was out. They were protesting. They were marching. They were doing whatever the hell they do in Portland every once in a while. I don't know. They assault pedestrians and right. try and pull people out of their cars. But, you know, for, for somebody like you that spent a career in soft, you're kind of looking at that through a different lens. Right. Exactly. And you know how it is kind of when you're overseas, too, especially when you're in a, a non-combat zone. You're doing some, you know, teach people how to dig wells or something on stage, which is stuff that we do. It was absolutely, you know, stuff that we do, especially that we did pre GWAT. We still do sometimes. And I, we'll be doing more of that as the years go by because that's, you know, secondary mission set. So it's kind of like that, kind of like, you know, you're in uh, the Republic of Oregonia stand or whatever, and like, oh, everything's peachy. And then you're looking around and you're like, this is, this is not only not peachy and cool, but this seems to be spreading. And then you take a, a step back from that and you start looking around and you see the framework of how this could go bad. I will say I didn't predict it going bad this quickly. I, I thought we had a couple of years left, but I mean, it has spread like wildfire. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was really kind of unique to be positioned to see this happening first. And, you know, something that's kind of, and, and again, to that point of, you know, okay, you know, especially like an SF guy can take a look and say, all right, we are tracking, they are on this track. Maybe we had a little more time, but they seem to accelerate things. I think it what's one of the most interesting things to me, and I posted on Twitter, I wasn't the only one, it was all over, you know, Special Forces Instagram and SF Twitter and things like that. But it was the, the Special Operations Research Office pyramid that was, oh, that, yeah. that was, you know. Dude, I saw that today, and I, I, it was hysterical, I thought, because apparently we've all been thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> it, 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 again, like, prolific. Like, it, this, was, this was published back in 1966. Um, but it basically, it, if, if anybody's unfamiliar, it's this pyramid where at the bottom you have, it's something very, very benign, very nonviolent, just disenfranch disenfranchisement with local, state, you know, national government or has, has a grievance. And as, as that pyramid climbs, actions that are described become more and more destructive. And basically it, the, the tip of the pyramid is over guerrilla warfare. Um, whatever their stated goals are. Back in 1966, it was designed, again, it's prolific, but it was designed to, to talk about, you know, communist revolutionaries, communist guerrillas all over the world. And, the, you know, back then, the Red Menace was really driving U.S. foreign and military policy. But, yeah, the thing kind of comes full circle, man. I know it was updated back in the, like, the early 2000s, things like that, but you know, that original one really seems to, to, to track. And they are tracking that. But they, you're right. They seem to have sped up the entire process. Right. Which, you know, sometimes how these things go, too. Without, you know, putting together a real intelligence network, you, sometimes you don't understand how, how things, how well spread things are or, or where they're actually at. But, you know, you can take a look at it with your eyeballs and, and kind of see. You know, yeah, they've, uh, I think they've surprised a lot of this by how quickly they've been able to ramp this up in the next year. Which, uh, which goes to, you know, I really feel like the second point, uh, I don't know where you're at on this one, but my thought is, I mean, this is by design. Somebody's pulling the strings on this. This is in no way organic. This is not something that just materialized. Uh, this is somebody's, somebody's leading this very intentionally and, and driving it. Oh, I mean, I'm 100% I'm in agreement. They, you know, we, we've always seen kind of like Antifa kind of sprout up at opportune times. And that's, ex in my opinion, is that's exactly what happened. Um, I, I'm not, I didn't want to come in here to, to talk, you know, the death of George Floyd or anything like that. My, my opinions are, have been very clear on Twitter and things like that. I think they took, they saw an opportunity where a lot of people had a legitimate grievance and there was going to be some mobilization, organic things. Yes. 
it, it, that that itself was very organic and whatever. You know, I think you'd be hard pressed to say, oh well, I don't know about that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that situation is is any is something other than what we saw. But they took advantage of that situation, and they saw the potential to further their goals. And they've co they've co opted this entire thing. We're we're not even talking about George Floyd anymore, dude. We're, we're, nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about police reform. Nobody's talking about recentering, you know, to community policing. No. What everybody's talking about is, holy shit, Antifa, for all intents and purposes, you know, seceded from the United States. They took six blocks of Seattle and they declared it an autonomous zone and posted, you know, signs that said, now leaving the United States of America. Like, Whoa, that is, that's craziness. And how, and you know, I agree that that's not organic. That, that took planning, yeah, that, yes. that took an underground and auxiliary, you know, terms that are common in unconventional warfare. You, you just brought up something that I really want to make sure that the people are understanding about this too. What you just said about the fact that this was an exploitable opportunity and they were able to do this, that really also reflects hierarchy. Like, that's not something that, you know, you and me are organizing the revolution or base or whatever, and then something happens halfway across the country, and we're like, oh, let's go do some stuff. I mean, that is like a, a rigid, well-put-together hierarchy that can actually engage, you know, hit go. Uh, and it was like, you know, it was like a day after all this stuff hit the news. And there, was, there were going to be, obviously, some organic uh, protests, I would think, in, in Minneapolis. But, uh, I mean, this hit high gear everywhere at once, 140 cities, you know, by like the second day. I mean, yeah. that, that reflects some well-put-together leadership. It's, it's global, dude. Yeah. Oh, it's I nuts. Mean, it, I mean, I mean yeah, it, Japan, it, like, yeah, protesting England's Turkey, getting hit hard, too. Right. Well, all of Europe. I mean, all of Europe has seen, like, actual riots and, you know, stuff on, on par with what we're seeing here, which is insane. I mean, I, I know, you know, I don't know, man. Nobody in the media has talked. Nobody. Nobody's dug in Antifa. I, everybody runs top cover, and they say, "Oh, there's there's no there's no command and control. There's there's none of that. There's not." Honestly, man, it, it when I take a when I take a look, and and I'm listen, I, I'm not like some seasoned soft veteran at, at, with 20 years in or anything like that. But just from where I'm standing, and I know I'm not the only SF dude who's who is thinking the exact same thing, which tells me I'm probably not that far off base, but that took some serious, serious planning considerations. I, that was, it, it was orchestrated. I, at least I think so. Without question. Yeah. I mean, I'm hundred percent with you on that one. Like th there's no way to organize, there's no way to get something rolling that quickly, like you said, without serious planning. And I, you know, without going too far into the tinfoil hat zone, which I, I, I do occupy once in a while. I, I try to stay out of it, but sometimes I get drug into it. You know, one of the things I've said about this is this feels very much to me like this is the culmination of 50 years of, of planning and, and infiltration and organization on the far, part of the far left. I mean, it's, it's just what it feels like, man. I mean, we, I mean, they, they have, they have, Media. They have the media. They have academia. Yeah. Um, I mean, they don't really have to do any sort of like source recruiting or anything like that. They basically have a prepackaged. They have a prepackaged grunt, you know, that comes out of that comes out of you know, you know, the American University. Um, sure. I mean, are do, are, do they lack that? that leadership, you know, yeah, but that's e that you can easily organize that and, and tap into that massive pool of, I don't even want to say they're disenfranchised, man. Cause it's not, this, this isn't, this isn't like, this isn't like Bundy. It, it, you know, this isn't like, you know, some, I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, there are no, of course there are, are far right extremist organizations that are doing bad things, but, when you take a look at recent history, people that, you know, and activities that totally dominated the news cycle. I mean, Bundy controlled the news cycle for all, you know, for months in 2014, and that's all right. people were talking about. But that dude had a, had a gripe with the federal government. 
what I see here, and correct me if I'm wrong, or if you disagree, please let me know, but they don't have a gripe with the federal government. They have, they have a gripe with our way of life, our culture, um, I mean, everything like that. I, they want to, you know, you log on to any sort of open source Antifa material, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. They're, they, all, they're, all, saying, they're all saying the same things. Oh, dismantling of, of, the, of capitalism and, and dismantling of, of, you know, police forces and, you know, removal of the, of the American penitentiary system. Right. That's not, those aren't gripes with, with the government. That's not, oh, you know, the government told me I can't let my cattle graze on my lands because they're, whatever. No, that's just, wow, we just hate everything America stands for. And we're going to take advantage right. of, of this organic movement and totally co-opt it right. to, to further our well, goals. It's insane. You know, I, even three years ago, Peter told me that they were like, you know, card-carrying communists with like, that was their in-state was to enable a, a communist utopia. I told you you were crazy. I mean, we stopped worrying about that back in 1989. You know, I think, I think the last Chuck Norris flick involving commies was like 92 because it was already in production. But, uh, you know, here we are 30 years later and like, that's what these guys are and that's what they want. And uh, that is completely at odds with the American way of life. Yes. So, I mean, I, I don't see a resolution to this either. Uh, you know, another thing I'm seeing with this, uh, kind of you talk about co-opting movements. I, I briefly touched on this yesterday on my social media stuff. I'm reminded very much of, uh, of like, mid-phase Iraq. You know, that every political organization over there also had a terror wing. And, you know, oftentimes they had almost the same name. There was, like, uh, offices of Mukhtar al-Sadr, and then there was the Jaysh al-Mahdi, and then, you know, a couple other splinter groups. These ones were all terror cells, and this one was a political cell. And that's just how they ran things. And that's, that's what I see here, too, uh, although I'll, I'll be in a different direction. You know, there are probably some people that, that are protesting and they just want to peacefully protest. And this is about, you know, George Floyd or, or police reform to them. But they're being used as the shield barrier up here to keep response from happening. So the little terrorists and looters and criminals can run around back here and break things, set them on fire, you know, fill in the blank. And uh, it's insane. And, you know, you're right. I mean, that, you know, mid, mid Iraq was before my time. So, I mean, but we, we saw the same things in Syria, late GY. Mm -hmm. I mean, ISIS arose by having the opportune moment of the Syrian civil war. I mean, that's how they were able, they, they co-opted a civil war into creating their own caliphate. Um, e even, as, even as ISIS went away, you know, it, it's not quite the same because Iran is a foreign actor, but uh, Iran co-opted the Syrian civil war and, and, and they co-opted the ISIS caliphate by arming Shia militia groups in order to, you know, exert control over the Iraqi parliament. And arguably right before that, Iran, you know, uh, globbed onto the Iraqi civil war that was kind of happening while we were there between the Shia Sunni and, uh, you know, armed up uh, their boys and took over the parliament. Yes. I mean, it's, I mean, I bring this up and you bring this up because there's precedent for this. Right. This isn't, this isn't the first time in human history, you know, a, 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 a movement. I, I, I mean, what do you call Antifa? A movement? I don't, I don't because we already established that there, there's mo more likely than not command and control and somebody pulling the strings and things like that to organize and mobilize as quickly as they did. But... <sighs> It, that's been this. That's been the story just for the past twenty years of Middle East, you know, Middle East, you know, unrest. Is is somebody is always co-opting, uh, you know, the situation over there. So the the president is there, I, and you know, if you can't see that, I mean, I don't know what to say. I really don't because it's 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 right there. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts, and uh, it, I see this a lot too as a good extension of like fourth generation warfare. And that's what I see this as, this is warfare. Uh, everybody figured out, I'm gonna say right around the Gulf War, that having a standing army, especially against our standing army, was a terrible idea and we would break it and you know, do not pass go, do not collect $200. So, I mean, people stopped building them. 
and they stopped using them. I mean, people, some nations like uh, Russia still has a, a pretty good conventional army, but they don't ever use it. Everybody figured out that like you cannot go toe to toe anymore, and they started evolving these these other means to accomplish their missions. And uh, it's it's been done and it's happened a lot. Uh, this is no different. That's exactly what we're seeing here. So, I mean, the groundwork's been laid. I mean, we've established that, and and here's the, that's the situation on the ground. I mean, I'm sure people watching, people listening will say, "Hey, I disagree," and that's that's fine. These are these are our opinions formed by I mean, our experiences. But one thing you've learned in the intelligence game too is you're never 100 percent correct. No, of course not. Never. You can't be. You know, but as, assuming that's the situation on the ground, let's let's bring in what like let's. I want to talk about like what you've written. And I don't want you to give away everything because I, I've already ordered the book and I, and I know plenty of other people have because, well, that's just something good to have on your bookshelf, something good to, you know, thumb through from time to time. Um, but looking at this situation, looking at these urban centers, Seattle, Portland, Minneapolis, that's, you know, I, I joked, I joked on, on Twitter today, like I have no idea how all my all these people I follow can live out in the middle of nowhere and still have jobs. Cause I'm, I'm not in the middle of nowhere. I, I'm very much in a neighborhood of Cleveland. Um, so keeping that in mind, you're, you know, so many Americans live in urban centers. How are, what, what are you telling them they need to do in order to, you know, kind of, you know, weather and or thrive, right. you know, in this storm. Right. Well, I think this is especially relevant, too, be, because we've seen so many police forces just fold and, and run. Like, they're not doing this anymore. Uh, or they've been ordered to stand down by the uh, mayors of their cities, as well as I've seen so many of these uh, looters and rioters that, that actually were arrested and picked up by the police, and then they get released, like, no charges. Even the city of Fort Worth issued a, a blanket statement. Or, uh, they're sending letters to everybody that was arrested, like, no charges, no harm, no foul, everything's cool. Uh, cops are only going to do this for so long. And like I said, in a lot of these places, they've already been unable to, uh, to, to handle the situation. So, bad thing about the book. Uh, as I said, I saw this coming a long way out, and I wrote it with the idea, uh, in at least the first you know, four or five chapters, that you would also have some time to prepare. So the first part of it is, is really long-term thinking. How do you how do you take care of yourself? Uh, you know, some some bits on fitness, some bits on uh, you know learning how to uh, fight with your hands. Because as you know, in a city, there's a lot of places you can't go with a gun. A lot of cities you can't even have a gun. Uh, improvised weapons, and then also you know if you're going to have some hardware stash back at the house, what are you going to have? Uh, the second piece, and this is what I, is probably the most relevant right now, if your city's not already ashes, is how to organize a team to be able to defend yourselves. And basically, I modeled that around ODA structure because I, I feel like that's the most flexible and, and most beneficial for, for where you are. Most people are not going to be able to assemble, you know, a 48-man infantry platoon, but they can get together another three or four guys, uh, do as you found at work, uh, whatever. To, to kind of build a team that can then make those other things, just like we would do in a, in a, in a foreign uh, foreign nation. So that's a, a big chunk of it right there. Uh, then later on, we get into some actually defensive tactics, like how to protect, how to harden your building, uh, make it a little bit harder to get into. Uh, what you should do if you had the time to prepare, as far as you know, moving your pieces around the board, uh, and then finally, you know, how to get out of a, a, an urban environment in the worst case scenario. And you no, know, honestly, I mean, I, I mean, I'll speak from experience. I, I'll speak from experience um, right here. When, when you know, when this whole thing went down, Cleveland had a had a full day of totally peaceful protests. Everybody was there. Everybody had the same message. Nothing happened, um, and everybody was really proud of Cleveland. Like, wow, right. you know, okay, yeah, like, kind of, we kind of broke the mold there. Well, that right. night hit and, you know, things just totally went to shit. Um, my sister was in the city Ooh. at the time. Oof. And getting her out was an absolute nightmare. I mean, you, I mean, you, you had 
I had no idea Cleveland had so many biker gangs, but they do. Really? Um, they were just <laughs> traffic laws out, out the door. You know, people going wrong ways down alleys, you know. She, her garage for her building is in an alley that, you know, a uh, 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 one percenter gang had just staked out and they were just holding there. Um, you know, buildings were on fire, cars were on fire. You know, if you've never experienced something like that, that is absolute sensory overload. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and and trying to, you know, trying to think your way through that situation if you if you've never experienced that, it's an impossible it's an impossible feat. Right. Oh yeah. This, these are things that you had to prepare for in advance. I mean, for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I cannot imagine being waking up yesterday or wherever in Cleveland without having the experiences that I have and having to deal with it. I'd be terrified and, and rightfully so. I mean, I, I 100% get that. And that's kind of where I'm at with this whole deal. Uh, I could even say that I've released the book. I, I could have worked on it for another six months easily, but I put it out now because I mean, normal people need some help right now. They need to figure out what to do right now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to get any better either. No. Uh, well, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's for sure. And then, it, it, you know, then you're just hanging out to dry. Right. So, yeah. no, a absolutely. I mean, I, I, again, I don't want to go too deep. You'd mentioned something. It goes further than that, the book, you know, going further than that. Um, you talked a little bit about, you know, some intelligence gathering, maybe, you know, a little, some source operations, things like that. Can you give us like a, like a 30,000 foot overview? What kind of what you were sure, talking about sure. there? And, uh, and, and obviously, uh, as you, as you well know, Nick too, there, there are things that I can't put in the book. Uh, of course. Yeah. Because somebody will come and have a conversation. With me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how these things work. But I, I did, throw a chapter in there and it's probably one of the more in-depth chapters actually about what I would call the the most basic building blocks that I could make of building your own intelligence network around you because this goes back to the only way that you're going to survive is to have other people and you need allies and you need teams and things like that and I mean this is something I was talking about with uh, our, our mutual friend Terry Mr. Leatherpants uh, on the phone the other day you know, people have been fed this like Hollywood fantasy of, uh, you know, seals or green berets or whatever, and, like take on the world yourself, just you're 60 and you're shirtless and, you know, light coat of oil and look good. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. That's not how real life works. I mean, one of us by ourselves, yeah, we're better than the average dude. We're still going to get overrun easily. We're going to get, we're going to get taken out. But you put two of us in that equation and we're not two times more dangerous, we're four. You know, all of a sudden, we could do some, you know, basic fire maneuver stuff. We could at least cover, you know, two angles. You put three of us in there, we're nine times more scary. Because we can do basic fire maneuver now while somebody has overwatch. All these things. And then you start getting a whole team together. Well, then you can do, you know, you can do miracles at that point. That's what I want people to understand is you can't bunker up in your house by yourself with your mountain of bullets and be okay. Yeah, it's just not going to work out for you. You have got to recruit other people, uh, even if it's just your other family members or maybe some extended family. You know, five, four or five people. Yeah, you can you can do a lot of different things there. But uh, it goes. That's also with the intelligence network. Like you can't see everything that's happening around you. But if you have four or five people that are feeding you little bits here and there, are you going to be a lot more aware and a lot more prepared? I mean, it makes sense. I mean. When, you know, things have calmed down here, but before, you're right, you can't watch anything. You can glue yourself to local news and you won't know anything. Right. I, was, I was getting photos from people down the street when right. the National Guard rolled in before anybody had, <laughs> had you know, had mentioned anything. And they, and they sent it to me. They're like, oh, is this you? I'm like, no, that's not me. <laughs> but, now, but now I know that, you know, there's, there's a platoon of guardsmen you know, on Murray Hill because they're expecting something coming that way. You know, th things like that. So, it, again, makes total, absolute sense to me. It really does. And it's hilarious that you already had a network and you've lived there for two months because you well, can't turn on. it off. My, my wife always asks me, like, why I go meet the neighbors and stuff. I'm like, because I need to know them and they need to know me. Exactly. 
You know, I don't, I don't just wear this shirt because it's sexy and it makes me look good. This shirt is a mindset. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you know, maybe go out and buy a couple of Aloha wear shirts, and you'll be, you know, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be uh, playing the Green Beret game. You know, it's a thing. They're they're thinking men. Most valuable weapon, right here, right there. But I mean, you know, it, it's it's all very fascinating, um, and it's it's I don't know, it breaks my heart that we have to even consider these things in America. Yeah. Uh, it, it does. It breaks my heart too, but it doesn't change any facts. And uh, no. you know, like we. I mean, just, what, what? What was? When did you ever think that you'd be reading about a complex ambush in the news? No. Oh no. Well, maybe yeah. I did. Maybe I thought it would be uh, you know some imported fighters. I didn't think it would be an Air Force dude. Yeah. Right. That's nuts. That you know, but I don't know. This, this is what 2020 has dealt us. So. You know, I, I guess play play the hand you're dealt, but that doesn't mean you can't. You know, you can't increase your odds. You can't right. you can't game the system a little bit. Well, exactly. You know, that was that's part of my approach too with this whole thing was I didn't want to approach this from the point of like, oh, I've got a million dollars in a trust fund. What should I buy to be ready for this? Like, no, man, nobody's got that kind of scratch laying around. This book and the planning process behind it was built for the average dude with average means to buy a little bit of stuff that hopefully he never needs. It's like the fire extinguisher under the sink. Like, you know, I hope you have the same one for the next 50 years. But the day that you need it, you're going to be really happy that you had it. And exactly. I, you know, I kind of think that's where we're at. That's where we're at with the organization and everything else. If I'm wrong and this all goes away and, uh, you know, no harm, no foul, well, cool, man. You got a couple of buddies that you're tight with and you know your neighbors a little bit better. But uh, if you ever need them for reels, you're going to be very happy that you took the time. Oh, man. It's common sense, though. I mean, that's, it's, you know, it's the fifth principle of patrolling and the off, most often overlooked. It's common right. sense. <laughs> right. And it's, the, and it's the one that nobody ever has. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I think that was – I, I could actually safely say that was a fair piece of the impetus of this, too. With all my other jobs, my gun jobs and all this other stuff, people ask me you know, off-the-wall questions all the time like, hey, I'm trying to get ready for X. You know, what should I, what should I buy is almost always the question. And the answer is not what you should buy. It's like, how many people are in your party? Like, well, just me. Like, ooh, that's probably not going to work out. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice thought. And, you know, of course people default to that. It's not, surpri it's not, it's not surprising. Oh, what do I need to buy? in order to feel safe. Well, it's the American way. And I get it. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't help if there are 12 dudes outside your house and they, and they <laughs> want you out, you know, and they want you outside the house. You know, it doesn't matter what you're packing. It's, it's, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, exactly, man. Now, man, it's crazy though, dude. It really oh. is. I just can't, I just can't believe that this is, this is the reality. Oh, it's and, been absolutely nuts. It's been it, how long it's gone on to has been shocking. I mean, absolutely shocking. That, and that's the thing. Like, this is still going on. Like, they didn't, right. they didn't run out of steam. They ran out of food. You know, <laughs> they they ran out of food in the autonomous zone, uh, Capitol Hill autonomous zone. Chaz, uh, they, you know, the homeless ate all their their they ate all their <laughs> they ate all their tofu and soy bars. Right, right. In the first that there, was, there was solicited. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh my God, we're out of food. Please send help. It was, oh no, if you could send us tofu and soy bars and fair trade coffee, that'd be great. That'd be like, super. Like, oh, it yeah, feels, no, it, like it's seriously like the memes just they've become the memes. They have. They absolutely. And first, Warlord took over already. It took less than twenty four hours. Uh, yeah, I mean things are nuts. Dude, did you see that video? That was brutal, man. I did. That's absolutely insane. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. But, I mean, that's what happens. Yeah, it, I don't know what they thought would happen. Now, then you got business owners from within Chaz are posting online because the idiots, <laughs> the idiots couldn't even do something basic like cut off communications. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you got business owners from within the occupied zone posting online going, um, yeah, there's groups of people walking into our businesses and they're demanding money for a protection racket. 
Oh wow, I hadn't seen that one yet. Oh, you didn't see this? Wow. Yeah, no. they're, they're, yeah, groups of group groups wow. of Antifa are entering businesses and demanding five hundred bucks. It's a protection racket. It's wow. it's they literally have become organized crime in forty eight hours. It's incredible. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. Well, this goes back to you know the point too of like you, at the end of the day, your defense is on you. Like you you have got to learn to take care of yourselves because the cops obviously will not always be there. There's not enough national guard. I mean, people have been talking about, you know, like, oh, the military is going to take over the country all week. Like, there's not enough when you really look at it. You could deploy the entire United States military against the citizens of the United States and not occupy half the cities. No. Not even close. I mean, it can't be done. And, God, I mean, what, what have we learned from 20 years of, of COIN and UW? You, you can have the biggest, baddest military in the world. But I'll tell you what, two dudes sitting out in a field – with Baofeng radios because, you know, that's, that's the new hotness. They're communicating. They're right. watching movements. They, you know, they don't, have, they don't have air support. They don't have ISR. They don't have armor. We do. But, right. I mean, last I checked, we haven't won in Afghanistan. It's the same, no, it's the same principles. So, you're right. It, it's just kind of on you. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely on you. Uh, I, I, it's funny, I just looked up the uh, population of Iraq because I, I wanted to make sure my numbers were correct. Uh, 40 million. So, so. <laughs> that's roughly a sixth the size of the United States. Uh, and, I mean, we didn't control anything that didn't have Constantino wire around it for a long, long time there. So, yeah, I mean, th th that meme writes itself. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, man, I mean, help is not coming. And... This is coming a part of the scenes, bro. Uh, I mean, I've seen that somebody was saying that uh, the cops are almost out of chemical weapons in some of these bigger cities that I don't see spraying pepper balls and tear gas and stuff. And uh, when that happens, they basically have the wood shampoo left. If they will let them use that, good fight and good night. You're on your own. Yeah. You know, it's, it was always an argument. There was always an argument online going, oh, do the police have, an, you know, do they have an obligation to protect you and things like that? Well, you know, one, you know, our, our judicial system ruled that they don't. That's a fact. But two, and more importantly, we're seeing, that, we're seeing this in practice. And what, what happens, you know, if you're living in downtown Minneapolis and you call 911? Or you're within <laughs> chance and you call 911? I, I don't even know if they take your call anymore. Maybe they burned down the 911 center in Minneapolis. Like, things are nuts. So, I mean, it is... This it, it's unprecedented. That's what I say. You know, a lot. You know, a lot of people have the opinion. Oh, Antifa. It's not an organization. It's just a organic movement, or there's nobody pulling the strings, or they're a bunch of 120 pound, you know, skinny jean wearing, bandana rocking, you know, English majors. And that might be the case. There's one. There's a. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Number two, they're, they're winning. They're and, and yeah, the other thing is like, it, it, the debate is moot because they they force they force the government out of a section of its own city. Right. Yeah, it's nuts, and, and they're. Uh, I mean, they've actively forced what five or six major cities now to either defund their police or significantly cut funding to said police. Like, that's that's bold. That is it bold. is. And it, it is winning. I don't care what anybody says. They are kicking the shit out of us right now. My, I mean, God, LAPD. They, now they're trying to, to, to pull $150 million away from the LAPD's uh, budget. Granted, the president of the city council who proposed this was, of course, enjoying 24-7 PSD provided <laughs> by, by, said police department. by said LAPD. But that's neither here nor there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there. They, of, you know, of course, there's there are no political points to be won in this. Of course. Well, you know, second, third order effect that nobody's really talked about with this either. You know, we really started seeing the demonization, demonization of police under under old President Mom Pants, and I want to say it wasn't a lot until his second uh, second election. But we started seeing it really bad then. Uh, you know, cops are bad guys, are terrible people, all this other stuff. Between all those years and what's just happened now what we are going to see is a lot of the good cops leave. Uh, you know, the good dudes that can do something else, they're going to be like, nope, no, sir. You know, I'm out. 
And uh, that is going to have a huge impact on, on policing in this nation as well. As, uh, I mean, those guys have never had an easy job. Not once. Uh, not unless they're, you know, Barney Five and Mayberry. But uh, any major city, most people have always hated them. Uh, the system is, is rigged against them. Uh, I mean, one of the great things about America, you could, you could honestly say, is that the criminal justice system is specifically built to handcuff the cops. Right? There's a lot of things they can't do. And there's a lot of, you know, bad dudes that walk because of technicalities. Uh, and that's already got to weigh heavily. It, it, all that's designed so that a free man never goes to jail. But a lot of that has to already weigh heavily on these guys' minds. Now we're basically telling them they're Nazis and we're going to take their money away and whatever work they do, uh, we're going to let these people go. And uh, also we'll be recording everything you do for the rest of your life. Like, no, bro. <laughs> I'll, go be a, I'll go be a potato farmer in Idaho. Bye. Seriously, and you're right, that is, because, well, who's left? Well, the petty tyrants that are ca causing these yeah. issues, because they can't do anything else, you know, right. that's all they know, that's the only thing their personality affords them the opportunity to do. Um, and again, like, that demonization of the police, I, you know, you can't have a, con you can't have a national conversation about, you know, reforms if it's just constant, you know, you know, attacks on the institution. Because what do we see? The police union, they circle the wagons and they say, no, 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 we're not even entertaining this because you think we're, you know, you, you think we're stormtroopers or you right. think we're, we're the, S, you know, we're brown shirts. So if you do that, they're not going to come to the table. I mean, they, they, this is the, this is, God, I mean, Iraq, I mean, how important was, you know, the Iraqi police in, in, in doing all this and bringing them to the table and saying, okay, how are we going to regain control of the country? Because what we have going on isn't working. We need changes. You need to come to the table and that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. Uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely not. And, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm wrong on this, but I, I mean, I see a, a balkanization of this country like we've never seen before. Like we couldn't even dream of in our lifetimes. And uh, I really hope that, that this train can be slowed down and it's not going towards the national conclusion, which is a second civil war. I mean, I don't know, man. I think we're, we're I think lines have been drawn. That's for sure. Lines have been drawn. Whether or not we can, I don't know, bring this country to marriage. I mean, I, you know, we're heading for a national divorce. Like, can we bring the, can we bring these parties to some mediation or, or some marriage counseling, if you want to call it? I don't know. I hope so. You know, at, at the end of the day, like, nobody wants to see the United States enter. Very few people want to see the United, normal people, very few normal people want to see there a civil we go war. yeah a civil that was, war that was two mistaken statements before about to happen yeah <laughs> there are, there are a, turns out there are a shitload of people that like to see us brought to our knees and yeah. uh maybe we start thinking about that as far as who's pulling the strings here yeah um and god it, in the same vein of second and or, third order effects i mean i i can't imagine what adversaries are thinking right now i can't um, China, Russia, things like that, or countries like that. I mean, they're, they're taking a look. And these are countries that have plenty of their own internal issues. Um, they are not as accommodating as we are. Um, when Russia sees an internal issue, uh, you know, Chechnya, Crimea, they just go scorched earth. So does China um, and, and how they deal with business. And I'm not that, that I'm not saying that's the right way because it's not. You know, those countries have a horrible record of human rights abuses and things like that. But when they take a look at this and they take a look at the exact opposite of the people charged with internal security in the United States, and they you know they see people taking knees or laying down and 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 just not giving a shit like. Fort Work just saying, you know what, whatever. You, you did oh sorry, you 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 destroyed businesses. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. You know, it's property. It's just property, bro. Right. right. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely nuts. Uh 
You know, I, I think a bigger point that, that we should bring up there, especially when you're talking about Russia, though, is right now, at least, you wouldn't see these divisions in Russia. Now, Russia has its problems, and you, we've seen some protests there, and uh, I forget what they were even about the last time. There was uh, the Pussy Riot Band, and that's pretty much my brain gets lost. Uh, <laughs> but, but they were always small scale. Uh, you know, when you looked at aerial photographs and stuff, though, it wasn't, you know, millions of people in the streets. That's what's different here is uh, it's a lot of people. I mean, it's it's very close to, a, you know, a 50-50 split. Uh, and that leads me to think that maybe this isn't reconcilable. Like, uh, maybe this is going to have to go to its natural conclusion. Uh, I hope it doesn't, and I hope if it does, it's a long time from now. But it certainly looks bad right now. It's, God, man, it, you're, you're, one, you're right. I mean, I, I think part of that is those, those countries kind of don't cherish things like freedom of speech and freedom of assembly and things like that. Not killing and, people in the dark of the night with their KGBs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, Russia did, a, after the whole pussy riot things, and Antifa did crop up in Russia. Um, and then Putin disappeared then. Like, they just, yeah, I mean, that's why I really didn't gain any traction. Um, and while I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, wow, we need to start disappearing Americans. Um, like, there are, but see, that's the thing. There's no, there's no easy answer. Like, no, there's not. There's not. There's not. There, there's, you can't sit here, like, and say, wow, we have an issue, but we're just going to not do anything about it. And then, you know, on the other end, you're like, wow, I don't. I don't know if I like the idea of the federal government just black bagging people. Because, no, no, I don't. That's you know, it's only a matter of time before it gets turned on you. Is most of the problem. and that's the thing. I mean, how I mean, how many times have we seen the government overstep its authorities and you know, I don't know, kill Green Berets over an eighth of an inch of a shotgun or you know, you yeah, know, great weapons charges out of some weird cult in in Texas, and then next thing you know, a bunch of kids, women to death. Yeah, yeah I mean, seventy two men, women, and children are cooked alive because who who knew who knew some uh, some some uh, riot control substances are flammable? Russia does, but you know, <laughs> it turns out it turns out that some knockout gas is lethal too. But you know, either yeah. way, you know, we'll talk about the yeah. Soviet space program another day, but. So but yeah, there, there's no there's no easy answers, and I'm not going to sit here and and come up with solutions. But and neither are you. All all you like you said, all you can do is become a little more personally responsible for yourself and your family, and yeah. that and that's where that's where we are. Right. Yeah, and I mean we'll find out how this shakes out. You know, if uh, if our government is actually competent, they'll find out who's pulling the strings, and uh, you know, provided they don't have a, a driver's license and a, and a address in Los Angeles, well, they will get disappeared wherever they're at, because uh, that's how we roll. But, I mean, if they don't, I mean, this could this could very well be the event that, uh, that, that shakes us apart. And if, if not this right now, then this may certainly well be the beginning of it. Yeah. And because even, even if this does simmer down, I mean... The damage is done. That One, the damage is done, and two, Antifa is completely emboldened oh yeah i would yeah. be too I was I, on this the this, like, this is just this is just a confidence target for them honestly that's all this is is wow we totally got away with that what else can we get away with right well as was uh, brought up uh, by by one of the dudes that i was talking to yesterday the day before this could very well be the uh, the dry run rehearsal too for november because can you imagine trying to hold an election while this nonsense was going on last week. No, we, we already have issues of voter intimidation in, mm. in the best of times and, right. and things like that. That's been documented. Right. Like, that, that's been documented when, you know, we were supposedly in a post-racial America when Barack Obama was running for president. Like, that, right. still, that stuff still happened. What is, what is going to happen in November? Well, in, in, I mean, what if this did happen? I mean... Or do you throw the election out? Do you have another one? Like, you can't say that it was fair. Uh, I mean, this could be, this could be, this could be it. This could be the, that could be the whole plan. Oh, man. God. Well, I, the big takeaway is it's really fucking bad. 
right now. <laughs> that's that's the that's that's the only takeaway. I, I got nothing because, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and, and gen up solutions because, well, one, I'm not that bright, um, and and two, I, I really don't think there are any good answers. There's certainly no easy answers, but I don't no. think there are any even good solutions to this problem. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm right there with you. You know, instead, I think you got to take the stance of uh, let me take this bag and put my shit in it and make sure that it's all in there because uh, we're going for a ride. Yeah, man, Montana sounds nice right now, doesn't it? It does. It really does. We got some space out here. I would. Uh, I recommend. Yeah, not... yeah, you got some space out there. A little bit. Yeah. 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 I know um, what you're my my favorite my favorite Vietnam vet on Twitter, Billy. He. Uh, oh yeah. He, yeah, he, he said, big shout out to Billy, buddy. Uh, he said, well, I got line of sight for four clicks in every direction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, Billy, I envy you right now, man. Right, no shit, right, dude. But, so, well, dude, I, I think, I, I don't want to keep you, it is late, but, you know, give give me give me that title one more time, guys. Go out buy this book, Clay. What's this book? Concrete Jungle: A Green Berets Urban Survival Guide. Concrete Jungle: A Green Berets Urban Survival Guide. And where can they buy it, Clay? Amazon, though, exclusively on Amazon. Exclusively on Amazon. <laughs> Hell yeah! You know, Bezos needed to make a little more money. Uh, yeah, well, he he had me by the short hairs on this one, so uh, he's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So, guys, go out, buy it, uh, support Clay, learn something. It could save your life. It was the same thing when I had Sean on uh, two episodes ago. He, he was doing more of the, the rural survival. So this, this is a great yeah. kind of, you know, exact opposite. A nice. lot of the same principles apply. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, urban and urban survival absolutely apply. Uh, but – it's the, the devil's in the details and the, the details are very much different um, in those two AOs. 100%. So, all right, Clay. Thanks, brother. Really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me on. Will do. Guys, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I always forget to say this. Uh, when you guys like, comment, subscribe, uh, it helps the, the YouTube algorithms kind of push my stuff on, onto the page. So, unsuspecting victims stumble across this podcast. Um, and when you do that, the podcast thrives. We get a little more exposure, and it allows me to keep bringing on top-notch guests. It allows me to, to take the time to do this. Uh, if you guys are listening on, on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you're listening to this podcast, leave me a five-star review. It helps. And finally, I always forget to plug the, uh, I always forget to plug the uh, Patreon. I did break down. I started a Patreon. But it does help me uh, upgrade equipment, helps me uh, hopefully when COVID-19 ends. I, I really want to do some sit-down interviews with guys. This, you know, the whole, the whole online thing, there, there's limitations. I'd love to do some sit-down interviews, especially some of the old timers. Uh, they have a lot of great stories to tell, and they are not technically savvy. Gary <laughs> Schaffer, for one. Uh, so, guys. <laughs> Dude, dude, real quick, man. He he gave me a call a couple of days ago. He didn't even say hello, man. He just went right into it. He goes, I'm getting really sick and fucking tired of you calling me a boomer. I go, well, dude, you're you're dude, I feel like I'm your personal 18 echo in your everyday life. So I'm just gonna keep calling you a boomer. <laughs> and Terry's not even that old. So the old timers that really have incredible stories to share, uh when, when COVID lifts and, and, and things like that, I'd love to get out there. So, so your support of the, uh, your support of the uh, podcast goes a long way in hopefully making those things happen. Once again, Clay Martin, thanks so much, brother. Ur Concrete Jungle, Green Braves, Urban Survival Guy. That's it. Thanks again, brother. Sure thing, buddy. Take care.